Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Duck Bricks. I'm Chris and welcome back to another massive haul video and mini tour of one of my favorite used Lego stores, Andy's Brick Shop. Located in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, Andy's Brick Shop is one of the largest used Lego stores in the US and has a massive selection of all sorts of Lego from across the entire history of the Lego group. Andy is a really great seller, I definitely do a lot of trade-ins with him and I cannot wait to bring you this haul today. So of course with Andy's I always have a massive massive Bionicle parts haul, so we'll take a quick look at that at the beginning, but I also managed to get a few other very rare and specialized LEGO sets that I'm very excited to showcase for all of you. So with that, let's just jump right into things. Thanks for tuning in and let's get right to the store. Hey there, here we are again at Andy's Brick Shop with a new haul. Andy's Brick Shop is basically my go-to used LEGO store. Not only are the prices remarkably close to Bricklink, which already has some of the cheapest prices for used LEGO sets, they also have an amazing bulk Bionicle and LEGO program where you can sift through their bins and really find all sorts of hidden treasures. As you can see as we go through the store, they have a dedicated Bionicle section with really great prices, but even beyond that, there are all sorts of treasures that you will always find, even if you go in just a few days apart, there's always going to be something new. I really love how large the store itself is, sometimes other used LEGO stores do tend to feel very cramped and tight, thankfully Andy's has a massive, massive space, and as you can see, he is pretty much using all he can while still making it feel like there's a lot of open air to explore. I really do love the layout of Andy's Brick Shop because it allows me to feel like there's a lot of products on the shelves and really allow each set to have the attention it deserves. Here you can see me digging through the amazing bulk Bionicle bin, more on that in a separate video because there are a lot of treasures here, and you can even see just how large the store itself is with so many different surprises to be found here and there. I really do appreciate how there is a good mix of sealed sets, of sets that have been checked and placed in boxes, of sets and canisters and bulk pieces and bulk minifigures. It's just a really comprehensive store to have in general, and I really do appreciate finding something new every time I enter the store itself. From LEGO Dimension stuff, to new Bionicle canisters, to vintage LEGO pirate sets, there is something for everyone here. Repeat viewers may be familiar with Andy's system of Bionicle bulk lots, but just in case this is one of your first videos, the way that Andy's has it set up is that he has a massive bin of random Bionicle pieces, and you can pretty much grab anything in the bin that you want and fill up a Ziploc bag for only around $20. So very happy with that sort of setup, and here we have the fully washed pieces of all the different random LEGO Bionicle bits and pieces I got. Nothing really in particular I wanted to get here, but I'll just point out some of the fun stuff as we go along. We have the foot piece to Tuma here, which originally came out for Liwa Fentoka. Some more Rakshi elements, because I'm trying to complete a special Rakshi project. Stay tuned for that, where I build all 42 canon versions of the Rakshi. Just some random Toa Metro pieces, like the black foot is always a good thing to get. Some random CCBS Darth Vader pieces, so these are printed CCBS shells, some tall Hordika feet, so I always just wanted more of these. Some more of these Star Wars construction stuff with these shells and tan here. I got some Vaki pieces right here, always useful for some of the random Dark Hunter builds. Speaking of the Dark Hunter builds, I got some Vaki torsos as well as leg pieces, so just some random stuff like Toa Metru shoulder armor I needed. Some more Darth Vader 2015 Ultra Build sets, so just some random pieces to get here and there. Nothing super, super rare here, unfortunately unfortunately, because I really do feel like I've kind of almost picked the parts list clean at this point, but this is just kind of some random stuff I wanted. More Hordika foot, really just stuff to bolster my Bionicle parts collection. This is the Kopaka Ski Sword in just the light gray, so that could be useful. Always good to have some more Mctoran feet to build some Tohunga villagers. Let's see, what else do we have here? Specialized CCBS limbs, who knows when that will come in handy. We've got some more transparent blue CCBS stuff. Let's see, one of the claws for the Paracas. This is for Vazon, actually, so that's always good to get with the silver tipping right there. Some random CCBS rock pieces added on. This actually originated from LEGO Throwbots, so getting the gunmetal gray armor pieces here as well as the orange is always useful. We have Hero Factory jumpers here. Let's see, what else have we got? The brown claws are actually pretty useful. These are from some of the other Lego plant sets and whatnot, so not even just stuff for Hero Factory. This was introduced for Lego Legends of Chima, but we did see it in some of the CCBS Chima Ultra Build sets. Let's see, we got some Rakshi torsos right here. 
some random Throbot's wheels, or Robo Rider's wheels, my bad. So always good to get some of the random character wheels like these. I also always think these pieces are useful for the golly hooks. And we actually have some random other pieces here, like just some miscellaneous useful pieces for building. I guess a system piece snuck its way in. This is from the 1999 Star Wars droid carrier. We got a Chima piece that also snuck in for the ice forming around a minifigure, which surprisingly was only exclusive to Lego Chima. Some more Throbots and Robo Riders pieces here, so good to get that. Let's see, nothing too, too crazy. I mean, we've got a Rahaga arm. Uh, let's see, Vaki limb. This piece right here, which is from like the CCBS Beast Elements. And yeah, honestly, all in all, this is nothing too, too crazy going on. This piece is specifically from Kreka. I just found it funny how they actually had a bit and piece of Kreka in there, but... All in all, just some random Bionicle book that I just wanted to pick up to accentuate my Bionicle collection, make it easier for me to build the canon models, and just continue bringing more Bionicle content to you. All right, so here we have the massive giant truck from the model team line, set number 5571. This again is one of the rarest LEGO model team sets. If you check on Brickling right now, there's only around two to three listings available, at least as of the time of this recording, and they're upwards of over $500 to $600. So it was a really nice find to be able to get this at Andy's Brick Shop. I'm really happy to have it. And you can see that this was kind of the style of expert style LEGO vehicles that they were doing back before they had LEGO created or creator expert and stuff like that. This was really kind of the precursor to Technic as well, in a sense, in the fact that it was doing these large scale models, but using primarily system bricks. Now this has a lot of really unique elements to it. First of all, I do want to showcase some of the play features. You can see here that the engine can actually be fully opened up once you remove the front bumper here. You can open the engine outwards and reveal the engine inside. This is actually really nicely detailed, especially for its time using some studs on these side techniques. Just some good detail for an engine that you really wouldn't expect to see in any other LEGO set around this era, because again, this was far before LEGO was doing a lot of these large scale vehicles, and this was one of the first they ever did. I really love the nice touch of the classic LEGO kitten mold as the front hood ornament there, and also the chrome pieces are really cool and truly make the set really stand out. You'll notice that as I lift this up a bit, the wheels are actually steerable, so it has the hand of God steering technique sort of like right here, so you can have it be fully steered back and forth. It's not the best steering, it can't really steer too too much, but it gets the job done just okay. Moving it around to this side, one thing that I thought was really interesting is that there were quite a lot of pieces here that I just didn't recognize previously, such as these chrome antennas, the chrome bars here, you've got these very large door elements, which I certainly had not ever encountered before. You can see just how large these door pieces are, and all in all, this is using a lot of really interesting building techniques that honestly probably wouldn't fly nowadays, but for its time were really good. On the inside, you can see that these seats can actually be folded downwards if you want, so you can have more space in the back. And what's in the back is actually a full-size bed. So tilting it kind of to the side here, you may notice that these lift open here and barely inside you may see a small bed for the driver to be able to sleep in. If it's a particularly long night driving the truck, they can just crash in the back of the cab. Now this did have a bit of a space for a back actual piece to be added onto the truck itself. Obviously the set did not come with the cargo that the truck is hauling. It's really just the front of the truck here, but I can imagine that this would be a massive build just having something to link onto the set. And I'd be really curious to see if people have actually built it themselves. This to me honestly kind of feels like something that you would see at say the mini land sections of Legoland. It's not quite minifigure scale. It's a lot larger, but I can maybe see it potentially fitting some of the large-scale Technic figures, but it really is just a scale of its own, which makes it really special. Sure, some minifigure pieces are used, like the standard door here you can open up to take a closer look at the bed inside, but I guess this is more supposed to act like a window, and the same kind of goes for these tool compartments on the side here. It's using these standard minifig accessories, but I guess they're supposed to be used by a much larger character. One thing that I really love about the truck is the addition of all the chrome elements. I really like that back then, LEGO was really dedicated to producing a ton of these different chrome pieces. Of course, nowadays, because LEGO has seen that chrome doesn't really withstand the test of time, they aren't really going to be including any more chrome pieces in modern sets, but it's still really cool to see all of these, these pieces right here, all the front lights, front lights back here, back lights, every single piece that you can see on the side here is fully chrome, very shiny, and reflective. With that though, let's now move on to the next part of the haul. 
Also from Andy's Brick Shop, I finally was able to get one of these sets from the LEGO City Volcano Explorer sub-theme, which was a really niche sub-theme that, that personally I did not purchase any sets from when it first came out, but I actually really regretted it because I think a lot of the designs are really interesting, and it came with some of the most interesting minifigures I've seen across City, well, at least for one minifig. Now, this is the Heavy Lift Volcano Helicopter. It did also come with a side build of a volcano. Unfortunately, I accidentally packed it away before filming this video, but as it is right now, this was really just the main focus of the set. You essentially have two different side vehicles, which are meant to transport the lava boulders, and then you have a ton of different lava boulders stored in the volcano itself. So. First off, you have this forklift right here. Super, super simple. You just kind of lift that up so you can bring that into different areas. Then you can store it inside this truck right here. So just really simple stuff to play around with. And lastly, the truck can just tip the boulder to the side for when it's needed for analysis. Now, this is a really fun set because it actually comes with two different modules for the helicopter to pick up. So we have the base helicopter right here, and you'll notice that there is a lock function. Right now, I have this really interesting looking helicopter, which honestly is a very realistic design. Almost feels like a military type transport helicopter or whatnot, which is part of the reason why I was so drawn to it because of just how interesting it is. You have a hatch going down in the back featuring some minifigures all the way inside there. Very hard to see with the lighting right now, but you can really see the figures looking out inside there and some analysis stations inside as well. Closing that up though, we have a main bay here featuring some more minifigures that are waiting to be deployed. Now what's really cool is that this is the lock. So the way this works is that you can pull this out and drop off this particular module and then fly off with the helicopter. So the helicopter itself is literally just like this. It's very hollow on the inside, but it is very large and substantial. It honestly kind of reminds me of some of the Dino Attack helicopter stuff because of just how large and realistic it is as a military style transport helicopter. So this module here is probably my favorite module because it really looks like some minifigures are being transported right into the heat of volcanoes. You have the platform going down for them to walk down. And then here we have the favorite minifigure of the set for me personally. It is a fully metallic silver minifigure wearing a hazmat suit. Now this is such a cool figure design. I love the way this looks and I'm very happy to be able to pick up this set even just for this figure. So just for this figure alone, very, very cool to get this particular element featured in the set itself. So really love that. You also have a bed in there so the figures can actually sleep in a bed for long distance and a research facility. So they can really just use this module as a base camp if they need to. But then we have another module. This right here is meant to split the rocks apart. The way it works is you put one or two of the rocks inside the module here. And these are specialized rock molds. So the way it works is that you just use this particular function right here to press down. And the way it's supposed to work is that the rock will split apart. Unfortunately, the pieces are a little bit sticky right now, but yeah, there we go. So you have the rock splitting apart like so. It may take a few more times to really just smash that whole thing open, but then you essentially have the rock splitting open, revealing the powerful crystals or precious crystals inside. So just a really cool function to have in general. I love the design of the mineral, even though the function does not work the best, especially because of the way that the tightness of the boulder works. I just think it's really cool to have this. And of course, if you so please, you can have the entire helicopter descend downwards, and it's super simple. It's literally just a Technic bar that unlocks, locks, and flies off. So there you have it. This is a really cool helicopter design. I love the modularity of it, and I honestly kind of wish that they leaned more into this modularity for other sets in the Volcano Explorer sub-theme. Just imagine how cool it would be to have a whole different fleet of modules that they could have used throughout the sub-theme to even maybe have a vehicle carrier for the helicopter. Just a really cool concept in general that I think I really appreciate in this set. With that, though, we've wrapped up our look at this set that I got from Andy's Brick Shop. Also from this recent visit to Andy's Bricks is this Lego Technic set number 42074. It is the Cool Keels sailboat. Now, we actually got another sailboat since this came out in 2017 to celebrate the anniversary of Lego Technic, but that one was a little bit different, and honestly, I kind of prefer the color scheme and functions of this one in particular. Now, this does have a wheel on the bottom, so you can roll it along the ground. Obviously, it does not float, but 
it does have the mimicking of a sailing function. Kind of interesting how you can actually let it balance back and forth to pretend that it's turning and whatnot. So really interesting how they made this a full play toy. And what's also really cool is that of course this is a Technic set, so there are a lot of different functions. First off, twisting the steering wheel on the back here actually does turn the rudder on the back of the boat, which you can see right there. Very, very simple rudder and simple function, but nice to see that built in. Now, this also has a couple different features based on the way that you want to actually rotate the gears here. As you can see, the sail itself is controlled by rotating the crank here. Now, just simply spinning it around just allows you to spin it back and forth and have it actually turn back and forth. So this is really cool. Honestly, kind of wish that this was integrated a little bit better with the actual wheel. I would have loved to see it as you say, move this along, maybe that you could actually have it spin, but that may have been too complicated to include in the actual set. And as it is right now, this is a nice function to have without being overly complex and over-engineered. You simply just have a cam sliding back and forth to allow the sail to pivot back and forth like so. So super, super simple function, but it's just a very nice feature of the set itself. Honestly, besides that, nothing too, too much I can actually say about this set in particular. You can see that you have some controls up at the front here where you can pretend that a figure is sailing the boat just back and forth like so. But honestly, I just wanted to get this because I'm trying to collect any Technic set that catches my eye, and this absolutely was a very unique one. I love the color scheme. I love the decals with the nautical compass here, the Technic's classic gears up here, and the gears kind of continuing alongside the pattern of the sails here and all in all this is just a very charming nice little sailboat set which is why i wanted to pick it up with that though we can now move on to other stuff all right and with that we have summed up my latest haul from andy's brick shop let me know down in the comments below if you've ever been able to visit this location what do you think of the store and did you actually like being able to buy all of these discontinued lego sets and dig around in that amazing bionicle bulk bin I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for tuning in. Subscribe to Duck Bricks for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very soon. Thanks so much, and bye-bye for now.